Have you ever switched to an identical quad in your fleet, but feel like something is just wrong? Like, maybe floaty, maybe you're just not hitting your turns right? Something is wrong. Chances are, it's your camera angle. In this video, I'm going to tell you why camera angle is so important and how even a couple degrees off can throw you off completely. Drone Racing Academy. If you've seen some of my past videos, you would see that I'm a big fan of fixed camera mounts. Now, why is that? Um, you know, these variable camera mounts are kind of nice, right? They, they're they're very versatile, and I understand why you know frame manufacturers put these in because everyone's got a different preference. Some people like to fly 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, and so forth. It's really hard to accommodate all of that as a manufacturer, but a lot of us especially racing, aftermarket, we would put a fixed camera mount up here so that the camera angle is always fixed. What I like to fly is 50 degrees, so all of my quads is at 50 degrees. Now, for someone using something like this, what they usually do is they would, you know, take another quad out, or maybe they use, you know, a protractor and eyeball it, right? They kind of loosen the screws and like, mm, yeah, that, that's about 50 degrees. Yeah, that's good. Right. So your, I guess your question is, Hey, if, if I measured it and it's 50 degrees, what's the big deal? Why can't I use this? There's a couple of reasons. One, um, chances are your measurements are not that accurate. And you might be off by a couple of degrees here and there, especially between your fleet. And they're going to feel completely different. And I'm going to explain to you why shortly. The second part is when you crash and when you're racing, you are going to crash. The camera angle is going to change every single time you crash. Um, it might not change by too much. But every time you crash, it's going to shift a little here and there. And if you're in a race, for example, and you had a big crash and your camera angle is completely out of whack, you're not going to have enough time to you know, slowly shift that back to the exact right um, degrees. That's the reason why, especially in racing, a fixed camera mount is so important. Now, back to the question. Are you really able to tell the difference between a couple degrees? Am I nitpicking here? And the and I'm going to tell you the reason why you're actually going to be able to tell a difference and why something like that could completely throw you off and result in a quad that just feels wrong and you just don't know why. Now, that's going to have to come to a little bit into kind of quadcopter flight theory. Now, quadcopters are really interesting because their thrust is only a single direction. And thrust basically just means, you know, force, right? And the force coming from the, the quadcopter propellers is just down, right? So. I'm sure all of you would know by now, in order to fly forward, you're going to have to tilt it forward. And that's how you're going to balance the thrust of moving backwards and down, right? So anytime you're, anytime you're changing the angle of your quad, what you're basically doing is you're, you're changing the proportion of the thrust that's going vertically down and the uh, proportion of quad, uh, thrust that's going um, horizontally back, right? And you're, you're just going to have to do some very, very simple... Um, math to figure out, right? Because basically your current vector is this. You can use uh, very simple math to figure out how much of that um, thrust is going straight down, how much is that going uh, straight back, right? And as you change your angle, that number changes. Now, that is one reason why it's going to feel completely different because your balance point, and balance point is basically when, at the angle, when you're, when you're uh, vertical thrust is offsetting uh, gravitational pull so you can basically stay level, right? So at every, for every single quad, you have a balance point on your throttle and angle where you stay completely um, level from a, from a height perspective, right? And if you change your angle, you're going to have to put more th um, throttle for you to not dip, right? So that's the first part that's going to change, right? If your camera angle changes, because that's your frame of reference, when your camera angle changes, you, when you look through your goggles, you're going to be at a slightly different angle than what you were expecting. And so, like, if your camera angle is a little low, for example, you're going to start popping up, right? Because your quad is not as tilted as you thought, and you're just going to keep floating. Um, you can obviously compensate for that in a straight line, but when you come out of turns, you're going to pop up, right? So that's the first thing. It's not the end of the world you can compensate for that. But the second part is worse. Now, with quadcopters, you have roll and you have yaw, right? Roll is this axis, right? This is called the roll. And yaw is this axis. 
right? Now, when you are completely flat and level, turning is always 100% accomplished by yaw, right? If I want to turn my quad when I'm completely flat, it is all yaw. Rolling does not turn me at all. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, when I'm at 90 degrees, if I want to turn, yaw does nothing for me. I can't turn that way with yaw, right? It is all roll, right? So that is the reason why when, you, when you're flying your quad as you tilt forward or back, your mix of yaw and roll changes to get the turn that you're trying to get, right? So let, let's say you're at 45 degrees. In order to make a nice coordinated turn, you're gonna have to use a certain amount of roll mixing with a certain amount of yaw to get the turn that you want. Now, if you're suddenly at 50 degrees, that mix changes. And it is this mix that is much harder to um, adjust for, right? Uh, when you're just flying straight, in a part previous example, the only thing you'd adjust for it's your throttle, right? If you're tilted at a slightly different angle than you're expecting, you can kind of see yourself dipping. You just adjust your throttle and you're fine. When you're turning though, you're gonna have to adjust your yaw and roll mix on the fly, and that's a lot more difficult, especially when you're trying to do complex maneuvers like a ladder or a corkscrew and so forth. It's just gonna throw you completely off. Flying those things is hard enough as is. If you're off by a couple of degrees, that mix is just going to shift ever so slightly and it's just going to throw you off completely and you're not going to be as tight as before and you are not going to know why either, especially if it's only a small couple degree difference. And that is the biggest reason why having a fixed camera angle is so important. Um, it's not so much of the kind of dipping or floatiness, it's in turning and turning is part that makes that so much more tricky. Once again, the mix of your yaw and roll to do a coordinated turn the way that you want to changes depending on what degree tilt you are. Now, that is the biggest reason why having a fixed camera angle is so important and why even after a, you know, a crash where you're off by like a degree, it might seem nitpicky, but when you go back out there, you're gonna start missing stuff, you're gonna be not as tight as before and you're not gonna know why because you know, when I look at it, quad looks the same, right? Nothing's changed, but something just feels off. That's the reason why. So, in order to do away with all this noise and complications, flying quads are tough enough as is, switch to a fixed camera mount, and that should make most of your problems go away. It also uh, helps you make your fleet consistent, so when you switch from one quad to another, it's not gonna suddenly feel completely different. So, that is my spiel on why a fixed camera mount is so important. Um, they're very popular in racing now. I, I think it makes sense in freestyle as well, especially if you're trying to pull off those more complex maneuvers or you're trying to do um, proximity type flying where um, accuracy is very important, right? So this is from Drone Racing Academy. I am Damon FPV. Please do subscribe to the channel, click a like, uh, put some comments in the comments section. Tell me what you think. Maybe a, a variable camera angle works great for you, tell me why. Or maybe you agree with me in that a fixed camera angle is the best thing since sliced bread. Also tell me why. So I look forward to hearing you guys' thoughts. Stay safe, keep practicing, I'll see you guys out there.